it was late in March when I realized that my 13th year through my, or my 13 year journey through Providence had essentially ended. I had my last day of normal classes without even knowing it. The only detail I can remember from my final day two weeks before was that our class had chosen Costco as our lunchtime destination. <laughs> we had watched a nationwide toilet paper crisis unfold before our eyes. <laughs> Yet missing, yes, missing our last quarter was weird. But I don't want the strangeness of this last year and the disappointment caused by everything we missed out on to detract from the entirety of our journey, which has been shaped by many years of hard work and long-standing friendships. You might think of this graduation ceremony as a celebration of our class, and to some extent it is that. However, to only celebrate the five of us, I think, would be missing the point. Our journey through Providence has not been completed merely, or even primarily, as a result of our efforts. We are also the fruit and the beneficiaries of countless hours of sacrifices made by others. So, I'd like to briefly thank some of those who paved the way for the five of us to reach this milestone. First, I want to thank my parents, and by extension, the parents of my fellow classmates. Mom and Dad, you not only sacrificed to give us an education rooted in our faith, but you cared enough to seek out a school with a unique classical approach to learning. You did this because you believed that who each of us became as a whole person was just as important as the skills we learned. Your sacrifices have far surpassed what our culture expects from you. Second, I want to thank my teachers, who have been our guides on our journey. Ms. Brewer, thank you for sharing your love for literature and for guiding us through the daunting project that is the theme, senior thesis. Thank you also for being willing to have a civilized conversation on anything we complained about before class. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Dace, thanks for taking time to advise me on a challenging thesis topic and also for having mercy on our sleep deprived souls first period. <laughs> Mr. Slepphurst, thank you for encouraging all of us to take the AP Calculus test simply because it was a chance to try it something really hard. Mr. Keating, thank you for not only teaching us theology and history, but also for caring about, uh, about uh, who we became as people uh, and caring for us spiritually and emotionally. In the last few years, you have become a much needed counselor for the upper school. I also want to thank you for being a wonderful bas basketball coach. The combination of your passion for the sport and the ability to encourage us brought out the best in our team. Mr. Buckles, although you haven't taught his class in a couple of years, your impact on our class is still felt in our writing and argumentation. In your literature class, you showed us classical, classical, classic examples of good writing. In logic class, you taught us how to make a value, valid argument without resorting to fallacy. In rhetoric class, you set us to work drafting and redrafting our own thoughts and arguments, honing our skills through practice. It's hard to overstate the progress we made as writers under your instruction. The teachers I've mentioned, as well as many others, have made the vision of Providence, Providence possible by growing us in wisdom, virtue, and eloquence. Finally, I want to briefly thank my classmates, Cameron, David, Mike, and Sam. It's hard to believe that our paths are finally diverging after all the years spent together. You guys made even the slowest and most difficult days enjoyable. But more importantly, our shared experiences and struggles forged a fellowship that will not easily be dissolved. I have huge respect for all four of you, and I pray for God's continued work in your lives. This graduation ceremony may put a more satisfying end to our time at Providence than lunch at Costco did. But I hope it is not the end of seeking wisdom, virtue, and eloquence. Providence's mission statement is to equip us toward these ideals. But there will come a time when we must seek them on our own, without classmates, without teachers, and even without parents. It is important, therefore, that we keep Christ at the forefront of our journey, as his love for us and his word is always constant. As we leave the shelter of Providence, the world will try to undermine our values, even feed us corrupted versions. But in Christ, we have hope that our quest is not in vain. As Paul writes in Romans, yet in all these things, we are more than conquer conquerors through him who loved us.